morning students we start chapter 1 laws of motion in this chapter up to now we have studied system acceleration different types of acceleration and velocity time graphs okay for constant velocity for variable velocity now next topic today we have to see distance time graph for uniform acceleration okay up to now we are study acceleration acceleration simply what we are already study that is the change in velocity with respect to time okay change in velocity with respect to time that we simply call as a acceleration now here one word is used that is uniform acceleration okay in previous graphs we have study uniform velocity in uniform velocity what happen velocity remains constant throughout the motion okay means as a time changes velocity does not changes that is the uniform velocity now here what happens acceleration is how how acceleration is uniform uniform means constant okay value of acceleration does not changes as a time and as a time passes okay simply so here some data is given to draw this graph for us okay velocity time graph for uniform acceleration this first column in which time is given okay in seconds okay 0 5 10 15 means interval of time is 5 seconds and velocity is given in meter per seconds now we have to study first of all this acceleration is uniform or not okay that first we have to check simply we know formula of acceleration is v2 minus v1 upon t2 minus t1 so for the first 5 seconds okay initially our motion is start from here okay 0 to 5 seconds so first of all we check acceleration up to 0 5 seconds okay so acceleration will be our v2 is how much 8 minus 0 divided by t2 5 minus 0 8 by 5 that will be 1.6 meter per second square okay that is the value of acceleration up to 5 seconds now we have to consider second time interval that is from 5 to 10 seconds okay now here velocity changes from 8 meter per second to the 16 meter per second so again okay acceleration will be 16 minus 8 is how much 8 and time is how much 10 minus 5 5 so again it will be 1.6 meter per second square okay similar way if we see this third time interval okay in that for 10 second 16 meter per second and after 15 second it will be 24 meter per second so 24 minus 16 that will again 8 and 15 minus 10 again 5 so 1.6 meter per second square okay so if you see any time interval any two time interval okay so in that we see acceleration remains constant throughout the motion okay so such an acceleration is called as a uniform acceleration or uniform acceleration if you calculate acceleration in between two time intervals at that time you will find it is always 1.6 meter per second square its value remains constant it's called as a uniform acceleration okay so now we have to draw this uniform acceleration by using this graph okay velocity time graph for so this uniform acceleration now <coughs> again i already told you when we draw any graph then first of all we have to draw <coughs> we have to write their measures over here okay so these are three important part that tells us the basic information about the graph okay two axis we are using x and y axis in here on x axis what we draw for 1 cm is equal to 5 second okay so here we take time on x axis and on y axis we take velocity so on y axis we have to take 1 cm is equal to 8 m per second okay so velocity we take here 
one centimeter is equal to eight meter per second, and on x axis we take one centimeter is equal to five seconds. So that is the velocity time graph. Velocity versus time graph by using x y coordinate system. Okay. Now here this is the our origin. Now we already draw two three graphs. Okay. Similar way we have to draw this graph. Okay. Here what happen? Zero zero means our first point is here. Zero zero. Okay. Now second is five eight. So five our reading is how much? Eight. So our second point will be somewhat here. Okay. Then third is ten sixteen. For ten our reading is sixteen. So that will be the our point. Okay. Next is for fifteen twenty four. Okay. So here twenty four. And fifteen is here. Okay. So this is the this point. Now next is twenty thirty two. Okay. This is twenty and this is thirty two. This is the our next point. Such a way that next is twenty five forty. Here is forty. Okay, this is twenty five. Yeah. So. Okay. So now, if you draw all point on the graph, and if you join each and every point of the graph. Then we will find all points are in one straight line. Okay. So what happen here? If we draw each and every point, velocity and time on this graph, then that all points are in one straight line. Okay. What we draw here? Velocity time graph for uniform acceleration. Our acceleration is remain constant throughout the motion. That is why this graph. It's straight line graph or straight line graph. So you have to remember when acceleration remain constant means uniform acceleration. For uniform acceleration, velocity time graph is always what straight line. Okay. So this graph is actually given in our textbook that you have to draw in your notebooks. Okay. So. If you have any problem to draw, that is actually last graph that given in our textbook. We are already draw two, two, three graphs. Okay, this is a simple method. Only we have to mention the scales here. Okay, that are important because that tells us on which axis and which proportion we have to take. Okay, so such a way that by simply you can draw. Any velocity time graph for uniform acceleration, also non-uniform acceleration. Okay, so what happen here? We take uniform acceleration. Okay, so for uniform acceleration, what happen? Our this line is straight line. But now consider if you take non-uniform motion at that time, what happen? If you take non-uniform motion at that time, this line will be not a straight line. It will be somewhat zigzag line. We will be observe there. Whether the acceleration is positive or negative, on that the nature of that line is depend. Okay, so always remember for the uniform acceleration, velocity time graph is always straight line. Okay. Okay, so one question we have to see that based on this graph. Okay, so the question is how much distance we will cover in. 10 to 20 seconds. Okay, by using this graph. Okay, so first of all, we have to see at a 10 seconds, our velocity is how much? 16 meter per second. And when of after 20 seconds, it reach 32 meter per second. Okay, means velocity is not constant. Okay, so in such a case, we have to do one thing that is we have to take average velocity. 
Okay? So initially, how much? 16. So our average velocity, that will be equal to, first of all, at 10 seconds, it is how much? 16. Plus, at 20 seconds, it is how much? 32. Divided by 2. Divided by 2. That will be the our average velocity for motion in between 10 to 20 seconds. Okay? So it will be 48 divided by 2. That will be 24 meter per second. Okay? That is the average velocity of this object in between 10 to 20 seconds. Okay? 24 meter per second means in one second it covers distance of 24 meter. So now they ask how much distance will cover in 10 to 20 seconds. So in one second 24 meter per second. So for 10 seconds it will be 24 into 10 that will be 240 meter distance that object will cover in 10 seconds. Okay? So, such a way that we can calculate the distance cover in between 10 and 20 seconds. Okay? Again, we can <coughs> calculate this distance by another one way. Okay? That is what? By using area. Okay? Under this motion. Okay? This area that will give us the distance cover in 10 to 20 seconds. So, let us, we can say that here, distance is equal to distance is equal to area of this quadrangle we can say this is A, B, C, D and E. Okay? So, area of this quadrangle So get distance okay so simply distance is what area under this motion that is nothing but the our distance such a way that by using this two way we can calculate the distance cover okay next topic we have to see that is equation of motion using graphical method okay suppose an object in Linear motion means motion of an object is along a straight line at that time. Motion we can express by using these three equations. Okay, that are fine, that are already fined by Sir Isaac Newton. Okay, that are called as a Newton's law of motion. In that, suppose if an object in motion in a straight line, okay, suppose u is its initial velocity v is a final velocity it attains after time t in throughout the motion its acceleration is a okay and after time t displacements produced in that object is s 
okay so the notations are also we have to remember here u is used for initial velocity v is used for final velocity a is acceleration t for time and s for displacement okay so if an object moving with the initial velocity u after time t it will attain final velocity v in a time t with the acceleration a okay so throughout that motion displacement produced in that object is s okay so <coughs> we can express this motion by using these three equations okay so in that newton propose is three equation in that first equation is v is equal to u plus at so v is simply what velocity is equal to u is what initial velocity plus a is what acceleration into t is what time so if u is the initial velocity of an object a is the acceleration of that object then after time t it will cover this it will attain velocity that, that is equal to v is equal to u plus at means we can calculate velocity of an object after time t if they give us initial velocity and acceleration of that object okay so this is the first equation of a motion which gives a relation between velocity and time okay so what we can calculate velocity of that object that will be equal to initial velocity plus acceleration into time v is equal to u plus at that is the first equation of motion now second equation is s is what s is displacement so this equation gives us displacement produced in an object after time t okay so this s is equal to u t u is what our initial velocity and t is what time u t plus one half a t square a means what acceleration and t means again time so displacement produced in an object after time t which having uniform which having initial velocity u that will be equal to s is equal to u t plus one half a t square so this gives us relation between displacement and time this gives us relation between s and t that is the second equation of motion and third equation v square velocity square is equal to u square plus 2 as okay u, u is what initial velocity so velocity of an object its square is equal to initial velocity square plus 2 into acceleration into displacement so this third equation gives us a relation between displacement is s and velocity v okay so these are the three equations of motion first is v is equal to u plus at so that gives the relation between velocity and time second is s is equal to ut plus 1 half at square that gives the relation between displacement and time and third up equation is v square is equal to u square plus 2 as that gives us relation between displacement and velocity okay so these are the we write here direct formulas of these three equation but now what do we have to do we have to obtain equation of motion using graphical method we have to obtain this equation now we know these are the v is equal to u plus at this is the first equation of motion but we have to obtain this three equations by using graph okay we have to use one graph and by using that graph we have to obtain these three equation now look at go towards the next point in that we see how we have to obtain these three equation so we have to see three equation of motion first equation of 
of motion that is phi is equal to u plus kt by using graphical method okay so to prove this equation by using graphical method we have to use this graph okay so look at in this graph what is described simply from here okay from this d point okay one object start moving okay now this graph is straight line means its acceleration is how we have already studied in last topic velocity time graph for uniform acceleration and there are we studied for uniform accelerated motion velocity time graph is always how, how straight line so here is time here velocity so this velocity time graph is straight line it means this is what uniform accelerated motion so one object start from this point and go here and point b okay start from d and end up to point b now here velocity is given on y axis time is given on x axis now here initially it is start from here so its initial velocity is represented by how much e, u initial velocity is u and that is represented by distance od this od is nothing but the its initial velocity now after time t time is what t here is t so this oe this distance okay oe is nothing but the time so in time t it goes at point b okay so here its final velocity become v so we can say this o c is nothing but the final velocity v okay so these are the initial final velocity and time taken to cover that much distance to go up to point b okay now we have to calculate here acceleration first throughout this motion we know this is a straight line graph means acceleration is uniform now we have formula acceleration is what final velocity minus initial velocity upon time to cover that much distance so our final velocity is how much that is oc okay this is oc minus initial velocity is how much od oc minus od this is d okay oc minus od divided by time t that much time it takes to go go from this point d to this point b okay initial point to final point so initial velocity is oc initial velocity is od final velocity is oc and time is t so here look at this line okay oc minus od this is our od and this is our oc so this oc minus this od will be equal to cd okay will be equal to cd so oc minus od will be equal to cd okay so instead of this we can write here cd and we interchange the side of this t it will divide here it, after going to the left hand side it will be multiplied to a so this is instead of this oc minus od we write here what cd because oc minus od is equal to cd so cd is equal to this a into this t so cd is equal to at okay now from graph again look at this graph this distance be is equal to what that will be ab this ab plus ae okay this total ab is equal to what ab plus ae now these two lines are parallel to each other okay so this distances should be equal to each other okay so this ab will be equal to cd this ae will be equal to od okay so here we write be is equal to ab plus ae now be is what be is what our oc because here ab is equal to cd ab is equal to cd we are saying that this be is equal to what be is equal to oc 
that will be equal to v so instead of this b we can write this v okay then ab this ab will be equal to this cd okay so instead this ad we write here cd and instead this ae we can write here od because ab is equal to cd and ee is equal to od by using this graph okay so we know cd is equal to how much et cd is equal to what et so instead of this cd we write here et that is od is equal to what od is equal to our initial velocity u so instead of this ud we have to write here u so by only rearranging the equation we can write v is equal to u plus et okay so this is the proof of newton's first law of first equation of motion v is equal to u plus at velocity is equal to initial velocity plus acceleration into time simply by using geometry given in this graph we can prove this v is equal to u plus at okay this equation also asking examination that also you have write in your notebooks okay remember these are the important part okay so this is the one equation we have to prove again second and third equation of motion that part we will see in next lecture thank you